all either affected directly or secondarily by sexual gender-based violence. Let us come together and do something about it before there's a breakdown in society or into this menace. Let's stop sexual and gender-based violence in this county! Mwemacho Sasa mzazi kaa macho ujue maneno gani inaendelea mbele yako. Msilale na mfungue masikio na macho mfungue. Mimi nimejikaza kukaa hapa mbele yangu nuyu nataka niwaeleze maneno ambayo ilioko. Na we uwe na huruma na watoto wanaotezwa na watoto wanaobakwa na vijana wanaolatiwa. Tunawalani wanaofanya vitu kama hivyo. Like for the GBVRC cases, I think we had about 265 between October 2013 to October 2014. Those were the only reported cases. But the highest numbers of cases that we have within the county are for the children aged between 0 to 11 years. And normally it is the female, the, female, the, the, the girls who are normally affected. Though we are very sure that the boys are also affected, but due to the stigma related to sexual violence, we don't get a good number of these cases coming forward. But the majority of those who are affected are the children between 0 to 11 years. Yeah. Uh, generally, we get a lot of cases within the community, mainly in the informal settlement, where we can uh, handle about five cases of STGV every week and uh, about 10 to 15 cases in a month. Uh, I would say that uh, at least in three months, I come across three to six cases initially being reported to me seeking my assistance. However, usually there is no follow-up by the, by the victims. Usually they call to ask, where do we go? Moroni is one of the sub-counties within Kisumu County and it's, uh, has been affected a lot with the gender-based violences. And for instance, if uh, actually you are keen, you could have you could you realize that last year we had a serious report where two ladies were murdered, they were raped and murdered and dropped somewhere along the border lines. That, was a, that, that, that is a clear showcase that uh, gender-based violence within Moroni has gone uh, uh, a notch higher. So, you know, not more. So, I Nanokoyakwert, so katakacho to biro ga unyisa ni mama da die cho en cho mane maka wono de moko wacho nani kuro unyo karembo sya ko chi kuro beto ko kase beto ko kanyo ta poka ne no kanya mabu abudo mate tane no kanya ti wok na e yi masin kanya ti biro kai wak kanya ti okot maber ta penje ni e ya gati ya kanyi Ni dongo dongo no kawaka samukelo kwercha dongo kaotera i machine to dongo the team with the miyanga i machine ni mama dongo dongo go gonyo na sirwaru mu dongo ti monata bia mbaya ta jinse ni eh bari je chen maduma manade so ya ne butaka ete ko sudo buta ka go lo sura ko nyate ta do spam ko nyate ta ringo ga nyate septal ka seringo ga nyate septal daktari no ringo ya ti do nyate Sanwa di kasa room. Kuno ni sawa ni dogura doga. Kini ucha kuduoki. Ema koro kini nego kini. To fatu mo bi fatu mano mango simu. Nasi peke ya cases. Kuna four cases. Hamba ishafanyika hapo. 
kuna mama mwingine pia mtoto yake ya 12 years alikuwa raped kukuwa raped akampeleka hospitali but huyo mama ali decide to watch hiyo case tu hivi nikamwambia kwa nini uliwacha hivi ule huyo mtu pia alitoroka haya kuna pasta mwingine pia ali rape mtoto pia huyo pasta alitoroka alafu kuna mwingine pia ilikuwa sehemu za kunya alikuwa anataka ku mtoto mdogo pia hakumrep but alikuwa anataka kumrep but the family wali took action immediately wakamshika akapelekwa kio huyu kijana alikuwa kijana wetu mwingine hapa kichwa yake haikuwa mzuri sana akapelekwa hata amefungwa 10 years size yako ndani 10 years they have been so many complaints of sgbv cases in kisumu county and we have had several of them in nyando sub county as well whereby we have attended to such clients from uh, child defilement and uh, rape cases and uh, normally what we do with these cases if a client come to our offices we refer them to the hospital we take them to the police station for their statement to be recorded whereby the the perpetrators are, are arrested and taken to court there is one case in east kano that a child was defiled then the perpetrator disappeared from the community but later on with the help of the police at katito we were able to find the perpetrator who was arrested and taken to court and is serving at kodiaga prisons for the survivors of sexual violence they should report within the facilities within 72 hours they should not wash the survivors of sexual violence. Any clothing, any material that has come into contact with both the perpetrator and the survivor should be properly handled. They should not pack them in paper bags. We advise them on how to package them properly and hand them over to the healthcare pr practitioners in the facilities who in turn hand them over to the police. At the health facility, we have quite a number of things that go on. One, we will expect the survivors of sexual violence to actually give consent for the services that will be offered to, and this is after the health practitioner explains to them the services that are being offered, and they will consent that they are ready for this. Then we have the PRC form, which is the MOH 363 form, and this is a form that helps in actually capturing the events and what happened during that time. It, we will be able to mark the areas that the survivor has injuries and you'll give any other. All the investigations that are done are, handed over, are recorded in the PRC form. All specimens collected are, are recorded. Those that will require being taken to the government chemist are withdrawn in the, within the presence of the police officer and then handed over to the police who take them to the government chemist. So we have the PRC form that actually encompasses all that. And the relevant people will sign, you will have their, their names, their designations, and for the police officers, we also include their, their numbers, their police force numbers on those forms, May basically just to maintain the chain of custody. So the PRC form is filled in triplicate. We have the original form that is supposed to accompany the PRC, the, the P3 form. And then we have the duplicate that are the, the, the patient notes that should be given to the survivor. And then we have the triplicate that is kept for further. It's kept for further, for hospital records actually. If anything happens and we may need it, so we will always get it. We will get it from the facility. So the other documentations that are there basically for the facility, and this is the SGBV register, what we record all that happens to, to the survivor during the time that they're seen within the facility. And then there's also the monthly reporting tool, which is the MOH-364. So basically, MOH-365 and MOH-364 are documents for the facility. But the PRC form will give us the clinic, the, 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 the clinician notes and everything that was recorded for the survivor. The other form that is filled in the, uh, in the health facility is the P3 form. And this P3 form is picked from the police and there's a portion that the police fills and then they bring them over to the health facility where the health practitioner will fill in the relevant information that is required and taken back to the police station after filling it.
Uh, the referral pathway has not been very smooth, much as uh, the actors in the referral pathway. Some of them are not doing their work the way they're supposed to do. So this is where we're having difficulties with uh, referring cases. We have sometimes problems with the hospital, sometimes you have problems at the police station. But the major challenges that we are encountering now is uh, the issue of compromise in cases of SGBV at the community level. And I think this is coming up because of uh, the way cases are being handled at the police station. Like of late, we've been having a problem where a mother takes a case of uh, a survivor of SDBV to the police station, and they insist they want a birth certificate before anything is taken to court. So this is a big challenge that is making mothers not follow up cases. Because for a mother who is traumatized after what has gone through with a child, will not be able to go back to the police station after she's been asked for a birth certificate, which she doesn't have. But uh, as community people, we've been asking ourselves, what is the reason why a police officer should ask for a birth certificate when someone is going to report the case of STBV at the police station? This is something that we feel should be coming later during the trial in court. But this does not stop a police officer from recording statement of a, of a survivor because the, the, the birth certificate has not been brought. In hospitals, we are also having obstacles at times with the feeling of P3 forms. Because uh, we have a problem whether is it the clinical officer, is it the medical doctor, or is it the nurse at the health, at the health center who is supposed to be filling the, the P3 form. It has been bringing issues a bit in Kisumu, and this is something that we've talked about, and we need it to be addressed because it is another area that is giving us problems. Because when a P3 form stays in hospital for three days, and yes, the perpetrator has been arrested and is in police custody, he's supposed to go to court within 24 hours. This is something that is causing a lot of problems and making women not report cases because they are tired of following up things that are not working. Uh, STBV cases are also taking too long in courts. That mothers are getting tired of walking to court. I have a case that has taken more than two years so for this case to go on, you have to support the mother to go to hospital to the courts all the times. They get tired of walking to court. So we are asking whether these cases could be finished within a year or less than a year. Because it is what is causing problems at the community. Somebody saying, fine, my neighbor's child was raped, was defiled, and uh, nothing has happened. She's not understanding that maybe court process take time. So most of them keep quiet and they try to arbitrate and take money in between. So maybe this is why we are not coming up issues of STPV. Bui tukaenda, tukapata doctors wanafanya kazi mzuri. Ata au pia walikuwa. Laki wakatuambia turudi saa nane. Hasa kurudi saa nane, tukarudi wakatuambia ati wameendo on strike. Na file iko pale, file ya umu toto. Hasa hakuna vile wanaweza kufill P3 form file iko pale mpaka saizi hiyo p3 form iko incomplete sasa imetushinda where to start saa nyingine kama client kama huyu hajiwezi kama siku huyo alitafuta tu transport ya kupeleka mtoto hospitali hakukuwa naye inabidi to come in tumsaidie hata kama ni transport ya kwenda tu and fro ni mimi mwenye nasimamia Asa hizo pia ni challenges ambaye ziko. Na vitu zingine ambaye the community, the affected members, hawajui where to start. Information hawana habari ya kutosha. Na rescue center ni moja tu ya Russia. Hapa Kisumu County. Hapa Kisumu County ni hiyo tu. Hakuna ingine. Na katika hiyo technical working group, wameanza kuzimumuza maneno ya kuweza kukua na facility ya nina wakitwa kwa wa. Ata hii facility mm. walizungumuzia mm. i work 24 hours mm. lakini hatujui challenge ambayo ziko i work 24 hours mm. hai work kabisa hata kuna kuna do mahali wameandika polisi inafaa kwe hapo na hii do imekuwa tu close hakuna polisi hapo hakuna eh mm. So the challenge I have known is that we established an agenda-based violence recovery center in October 2013, but the center runs from Monday to Friday between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. But there are alternative places of rescue, which is the casualty 
that is within the JTRH, Jarambu Yuginga Udinga Teaching and Referral Hospital, that survivors should be able to be attended to at, at the casualty, where we have staff who are already trained and they are able to take care of the survivors. So apart from that, at the Kisumu County Hospital or the Kisumu East District Hospital, they are always seen as the casualty. We have not really had a specific place for the GBV services to be offered as a one-stop, though we are know we've had further discussions with them and uh, there's a room that was already allocated for that. So it needs official handing over and renovation of the, of the room for them to be able to handle these survivors. So we are still actually sensitizing the community that if they have these survivors, despite finding the CGBV are still locked, they need to take the survivors to the casualty. That is where they will be attended to and all documentation will be done at the casualty. Any time past five and also over the weekends. So what needs to be done to ensure that the various laws that we have in system are able to assist the society it operates at an optimum level is probably to enhance the criminal system such that we have gender, gender desks at the various police stations so that persons affected can report these crimes. There's need for greater civic awareness to be created as is being done today here. There's need for peer counseling amongst the youth and those who are suffering or have been affected by sexual and gender-based violence. And I would say probably they also need for greater budgetary allocation for the hospital so that they could have special units for gender-based violence. Uh, forensic labs will similarly go a long way in preserving evidence to ensure that uh, we have successful prosecutions of gender-based violence cases. And those are to name just but a few of what can be done. There is the issue of vulnerability of the children. And then again, with, with sexual violence, you find that the people who do this to the children are not strangers. Yeah. They are things who are well known to the children, the people who are well known to the children. And they will use different tactics to make these children trust them. They will like create a rapport with them by sending them to the shops for mandazis. And over time, as they plan what to do, at one point, that's when they violate the children. We have the border border riders who parents have entrusted to taking children to school. But you find they'll start buying the children chips and small tokens, and then finally violate the children. So there are people who make the children trust them, and then they, they violate these children after that. So it's the, the aspect of vulnerability among that age group. Uh, the ones that are majorly reported are those ones for the adult and children because uh, for adult adults sometimes it is very hard to prove unless the person comes out and says but for children the community takes responsibility and even forces the parents to go and report such cases so in most cases the cases that are handled mostly are children are cases legal framework governing sexual gender-based violence. We have a plethora of laws that uh, oversee the same, being the Constitution of Kenya 2010, the Sexual Offenses Act, the Children's Act, and the FGM Act. What runs across the board in this, uh, in this, in this uh, act is that uh, parents have a duty to protect uh, children, being the theme of this training against gender-based violence. And the, the, this responsibility cuts equally between mothers and fathers. We have a duty to protect children against uh, harmful cultural practices. Special focus is on uh, female genital mutilation. The Sexual Offences Act provides for the crimes of rape and defilement. It, it is not worthy that the minimum sentence for rape is 10 years and for defilement is life imprisonment. There's no less sentence. So the public needs to be made aware that in instances where there has been defilement, 
and the court system has been undertaken, but the accused person has been sentenced to anything less than life imprisonment, that they are entitled to a right of appeal against the same. The Constitution protects the, in, the, a woman and a child from sexually gender-based violence uh, under the Article 53, which provides for responsibility to protect children against harmful cultural practices, as Alia said. The FGM law outlaws the practice of uh, the FGM Act outlaws the practice of uh, female genital mutilations. It makes it an offence to undertake FGM by any medical practitioner or midwife. It makes it an offence that attracts a life sentence if someone is if, if someone is undergoing FGM and they happen to die in the conduct of the same. is there in community depending on the culture where we come from but I would uh, encourage the community to take this as a serious issue so as we live peacefully in society when you re realize that there's somebody who is abusing another person because of the gender uh, report it to the relevant authority and action will be taken against that person to make our society a peaceful place to live Kilicho nipa motisha nije training kama hii katika mtaa wangu naona mambo haya inaendelea na ilikuwa inaniuma sana na inaniudhi sana lakini nilivosikia kuna mafundisho kama hayo niliwacha mambo yangu yote nikaamua kuja ili nipate kusaidia watu wa mtaa wangu We had some gaps that we needed somebody to come in and fill the gaps that we were having and Kituo has come in to come and help us fill the gaps that we were having like we've been having uh, problems, maybe even holding meetings and workshops for community members on just creating awareness on issues of SGBV. And we think with Kitua around, a lot is going to happen. We will have the community sensitized and the gaps that we have, they will help us fill the gaps that we have. We have to work closely and uh, closely with Kitua Tashiria and other stakeholders on issues, issues with gender-based violences. And for the young people, we, are, we want to urge them to always report any kind of incident in terms of gender-based violence. They shouldn't keep it themselves, neither should they solve it locally. To call for us who are in the legal profession to continue to participate in such programs for purposes of uh, similarly enhancing knowledge on matters gender-based violence. There's also room for increased participation in pro bono activities relating to this field. And I will say that I will really commend Kitwacha Sharia for undertaking this program here today and for what they have done thus far. With SDBV, you cannot do it. Women cannot do it alone. Because uh, people say the men are the perpetrators of SDBV. But we can't rule out that women also perpetrate when it comes to issues of sexual gender based violence. But we need to involve the men and just train the men. Because like in Kisumu, the people who are accused of uh, violating the rights of sexu children sexually are the border border community. So we are just saying, how do we bring in the border border community, create awareness to the border border community, try to maybe even come up with champions of SGBV from the border border fraternity and see how we can move forward, involve men, and see how we can curb issues of sexual gender-based violence. I'm the Sharia for facilitating this training. I've learned a lot. I didn't know how to take on, take on the, any, any, any rape case, but I'm now a person. Since I'm a kid, I'm a kid, I'm a kid, I'm a kid, kituo cha sheria kimetuletea mafunzo ambayo mafunzo tumejifundisha na tumefurahi tukirudi nyuma kutafundisha na wengine. Thing I know is that for SGBV it it needs a multisectoral approach. So all the the relevant sectors, the children's department, the health workers, the police, the legal fraternity, the judiciary, the office of the the, the public, the the public prosecutor's office 
and then we need uh, even our own county gender ministry, the ministry of youth that deals with gender issues, and all other stakeholders, in fact all ministries, really need to work together to be able to, we really still need to do a lot of creation awareness of these cases, because just apart from the issue of trauma, we have the issue of transmission of HIV that we know in the region is rampant and sexual violence also contributes to a number of these. So we want these people to come to the facilities early enough for us to be able to prevent new infections of HIV and AIDS and then we need to network and really work together towards seeing that the community is aware of even the services that are offered. The community is aware that sexual violence is a crime in itself and it has very it has very tough penalties for those people who are perpetrating sexual violence within the community. And then for those who are survivors, we need to embrace them. We need to see how they are rehabilitated. We need to check on their mental health status so that they are able to accept what has happened and be able to get out of it for them to have a healthier life after that. But it is something that we will need to do. Multi, we'll have to have a multi-sectoral approach for us to be able to tackle these issues. Well, the training was, was very nice. We have the capacity built and uh, we are very sure that this information that we have got is going to change a lot, a lot in us and also going to go back to the community. We are going to make sure that we sensitize the community so that they embrace the importance of behavior change and even right now that we are talking, we also know what to take, legal action to take and the procedure when an SGBV occurs. Thank you and continue with the good job.